hear these words from Paul's letter to the people of Ephesus. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. He himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. These are the words of God from long ago for all people today. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we are thankful to be here on this day, at this moment, experiencing this part of the gift of our lives. We're thankful to be here together. We came to hear what you might say to us, to experience how you might work in our hearts. So let the words that I speak be what you would have them to be. And whether my words are what they should be or not, help us to hear what you would say. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, up until Wednesday this week, I was on vacation. I don't want to say I almost didn't come back, but <laughs> the weather was nice and we were camping. On the first day, it's been a week, it be two weeks ago tomorrow, we drove up way up to Harrisville, Michigan, which is on the Lake Huron side. Michigan's marketing team calls it the sunrise side of the state. Everybody likes to go to the Lake Michigan side because you can sit and look at the sunset, and that's nice too. You have to get up early if you want to see the sun over the water in Harrisville. It takes a good part of the day to get ready and drive up there and be there and get camp set. We'd basically tent camp, and so we get everything set up, and you're tired at the end of a day like that. It drove all that way past Detroit, all those other drivers. Did you ever notice, Katie, we talk about the other drivers? And it's never us. So at the end of the day, usually we, we cook at camp, we, on the fire, on a little camp stove, the whole deal. And, but on a Monday when you've set up, you don't want to do that. So we'll go into Harrisville and find a restaurant. There are three restaurants in Harrisville. It's when you go to the east side of Michigan, the sunrise side, I guess people don't like mornings, I don't know. And so there's not as many, it's just not as crowded. There's not as much touristy stuff as the other, and we kind of like that. There are three restaurants. The first one is closed on Monday. <laughs> the second one is closed on Monday. And at that moment, if you're a tired traveler, a weary traveler, you're thinking, well, we do have food we could cook. 
How many times over the years do we tell our children we have food at home? Here we are. The third restaurant is open on Mondays. It's called Shot Makers. <laughs> In the front, there's a sign that says Bush, the beer, and Hunter's Welcome. And there's a big stag there with great big rack, the whole thing. It's just, it's that bar in a little town in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula. Shot makers. I don't know if it's shot makers because the shot's being made at the pool table or the shot's being made at the bar. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the shot's on the TV. There's basketball happening. It's a sports bar, by, if you look it up, and, and it's on East Main Street in Harrisville. They have the best mushroom Swiss cheeseburger I've had since last week. It really was very good, and they took good care of us. Our onion rings are amazing, and, and, the, and the people are even better. As we came in, there's a little front porch kind of area, and there's somebody out there, you know, smoking outside because that's the way we do now, and so they're, they're out there, and they got their little group, and somebody says, welcome, we're glad you're here. It's just some person. I don't know who he is. Oh, you know, hey, good to see you. They know we're not from there because we say y'all. And they say, you guys, because it's upper Michigan. Of course they do. It's all good. So he welcomes me. Oh, thanks. And we go in, we get a, a table, and we order some food, and we're there. And, and do you ever watch people? I don't want to say we were eavesdropping, because that's, you know, that's not polite. Sorry, if you're from Harrisville and you're watching today, uh, my apologies. You're lovely people. We sat and kind of listened. I mean, we are talking a little bit, but we've been together in the car all day. We've already talked to each other. So we're listening a little bit. And here's a guy over here that's got a silver ring, I think at least one on each finger with turquoise in him. He's talking about his next music gig and hoping some people show up and hoping they put some money in his donation bucket this time. And this guy over here is talking about which one of his boats he's going to take out on Lake Huron tomorrow. Okay, good for you. And he's playing pool with a guy who's talking about whether he might find some work tomorrow and hoping he can. And our person who's serving us looks like she's just barely getting through. She's doing it, but there, it's happening. And there's this whole variety of people, and somebody over there is talking about the thing they said or did to somebody I didn't catch the whole story. <laughs> but they're lamenting and feeling guilty for something. They're confessing. And about that time, somebody at the pool table says, oh, praise the Lord. They'd made a shot, I think. Um, it's shot makers, after all. I thought, it's church. I said it out loud to Susan. I said, we're at church. She looks at me like, now what are you going to say, Pete? Because that's what we do. As I watched folks share life, I thought, that's church. I wasn't even thinking about this message. I was on vacation. I wasn't supposed to be thinking about preaching, so I really wasn't. But I watched folks confess to each other and be different and be together and accept each other as we just sang. I thought, that's church. That's what Jesus is calling us to. He says, love your neighbor. That's what Paul's writing about to these Ephesians. There's one God, one faith, one hope, one baptism. One, 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 one. And we share that. We're all different, and we share that. And what would it look like to be a church that shared that? That's what our early Methodist founders we're thinking of the Anglican church was like well the people are here telling you what to do and then certain people were good enough to come to church and other people didn't come and Wesley asked this question who's in charge see if you went into shop makers you couldn't tell who was in charge the random guy on the porch who's just talking to his buddies I found out after a while he's the owner <laughs> I don't know who's in charge. They're just, everything's happening. I saw people helping each other get some stuff from, oh, the food's ready. Here you go. You know, they're just in between doing it. These early small groups, band groups, we call them life groups in our church, were meeting. 
And they included aristocrats and laborers and criminals all together. Status and labels forgotten, just trying to be faithful together. It upset some folks. Does that sound familiar? It might, if you're familiar with gospel stories where Jesus does things like hang out with tax collectors, criminals, because they were skimming off the top. Or hangs out with Samaritans or prostitutes or those people. Now, you know who I'm talking about, those people. You've got, you've got a list in your mind, those people. I don't know who they are, but we all have some of that. That's part of being human. And what they were trying to do is say, we should all gather together. And we should gather together every week in these little small 12 to 15 people groups. And then on Sunday evening, we'll have the society meeting. Wasn't a church yet. John Wesley didn't want it to be a church because he saw what was happening with denominations. So he waited until he passed. <laughs> and then made the church. Can't do anything about it now, John. Yeah, here we are still. To get into the society meeting, you had to have your card saying that you'd been to your small group, essentially. So I've been teasing all morning, we're gonna instruct the ushers next week. You have to have your card from your life group before you can come to church on Sunday. Does that sound welcoming? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't think the, in, the intention was to exclude someone. I think the intention, I'd like to believe the intention was to encourage, to expect participation. They were coming from a church culture which was simply the priest was here and said all the words and everybody said amen and went on about and did whatever they were going to do without a personal investment. That was Wesley's accusation at least. Now whether every person was you know, not involved, well, there's no way to know. But the, the invitation and the expectation was this idea of participation, of saying we're all going to do this together. And we know we're different. We know we come from all different kinds of any kind of description you want to think of. We have all these different facets of who we are. And as Methodists and now United Methodists, we want to not just say that. We try to do it. We're about how we practice what we're talking about as best we can. We don't always get it right, but it means that somebody who might not have been included we would strive to welcome. And it sometimes means that the welcome has to be a little exaggerated over here, over there. When Methodism first came to the States, some of the first Methodists were African-American slaves. People who were not considered to be human by folks who were profiting from their work. And so it was convenient not to see their humanity when they were included in this faithfulness. And church sprang from that. And we still have the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And it's, it's a hard thing that there's still separation. And it's a beautiful thing that people are faithful at the same time. And we get better at it and better at it and we're still working on it and it's not perfect. The idea of women in ministry has been a place where we've had to grow. In 1761, did I get it right? I did. I'm not good at dates usually, but after, you have the privilege of being at 11 o'clock, I've practiced. John Wesley commissioned Sarah Crosby to preach. It did not make the Anglican church happy. Priests were men, and Sarah was not. <laughs> a man. She had a story to tell, and John saw that and ordained her. By 1771, the general rule in Methodism was men, women, you got a story to tell, tell it. And then it took us until 1956, to almost 200 years later, to say women have full rights as clergy members in the general conference of the Methodist Church. Then Methodist, not yet United Methodist. Took us that long to get to there. And even having said that, we're still working on it. 
you know we're still working on it. If you pay attention, you know that we've just come through a season in our denomination about who's included and who's not. And churches who've stayed and remained United Methodists and others have chosen not to be. I don't want to get hung up on that conversation entirely. But I do want us to notice that one aspect of who a person is is not the sum total of who they are. Where you're from, whether you say y'all or youans or you guys, whether your skin is lighter or darker, whether you're male or female, who you happen to love or live with, who, what, whatever it is, all those things, what it is that you're good at. Some of us are good at math. Some of us get hives just thinking about it. Some of us are really good with English and language. Some of us try to preach anyway. <laughs> We're all different. Some of us love the music we heard. Some of us are like, what's that? Where's the rock and roll? I want to hear do the locomotion <laughs> or whatever. And we have these differences. Of course we do. We're each of us created individually, fearfully and wonderfully made. God created beloved children of God with specific and unique gifts for building up the people of God. That's what Paul writes to these Ephesians. To equip, each of us has gifts. To equip the saints, not just to be who we are, to be who we are, yes, but also to help each other be who we are. To equip the saints, and you know who the saints are, right? Please say yes. Okay, yeah, it's us, right? It's not just me, it's not just because I get to wear, you know, a scarf, as the kids call it. It's all of us. Equipping each other, encouraging each other. It's what I saw at Shot Makers. Somebody said, oh man, you can do it. Simple as that. Because courage is half of it, right? Helping somebody learn. Let me show you how. All those things. To come to unity of faith. To recognize that in all of our differences, what we have is the same is this confidence and trust in one spirit, in one God, in one faith. And that deep sense of identity as children of God is what, that's why we're all sitting in this room. Our lives wouldn't intersect, many of us, otherwise. We do so various different things. I've looked around church more than once and said, I wouldn't know most of these people if it wasn't for church. We equip each other so that we can come to the knowledge of the Son of God. So we know who Jesus is and who Jesus can be in our lives. So that we can grow in that as we continue. We're working towards perfection. And so that the full measure of Christ might be a reality in us and in us. Because it always happens in community together. It always happens in community together. It happens in us. We're transformed. We're changed. That's what we celebrate in baptism. But it's so that we can be the people of God. Each of us with our gifts. Each of us sharing this one faith. May it be so.